China's economic growth during the last four decades has gained recognition all over the world. Over time, the rapid development of Beijing began to attract countries that saw an opportunity for themselves in cooperation with the Middle Kingdom, a phenomenon particularly noticeable after the crisis of 2008. From that moment, the Chinese began their expansion. The target was Africa, Latin America, but also Europe, especially its poorer central and eastern part. However, did the Chinese manage to establish a foothold in Eastern Europe? There are big doubts about this. Welcome to Caspian Report. Beijing's foreign policy is mainly based on bilateral relations. Under similar conditions, the Chinese administration approached the challenge of expanding its influence in Central and Eastern Europe. The Chinese idea for this region was to establish the 16 plus 1 platform, which on one side brought together almost all the countries of the former communist bloc and on the other side, China. The platform came into existence in 2012, while in 2019 it was expanded by Greece and turned into 17 plus 1. The Chinese assumed that it would be more effective to coordinate the platform at the level of the entire bloc, as the projects announced by Beijing were often suprastate. Hopes made in China The region was perceived by Chinese planners as a place to fill the investment gap by exporting products, technologies and loans. China also noticed the prestige stemming from gaining influence in a region that had been the main arena of Russian-American rivalry over the past 70 years. The appearance of a third player in this place heralded a changing balance of power in the world. The basic motive of Chinese activities in the region was to increase mobility and connectivity, which was directly related to Beijing's flagship initiative, the Belt and Road. For this reason, most of the announced projects concerned transport infrastructure, motorways, ports and in particular the rail network, which was to be crucial for the transport of goods between Europe and Asia. No wonder then that the hopes of politicians in Eastern Europe were very high. The first flagship project announced was a high-speed rail link between Budapest and Belgrade. Beijing also promised a $10 billion worth investments in Romania's energy infrastructure, while Montenegro was assured a loan for the country's first highway. China came to buy as well. Among the most echoed purchases was Greece's port of Piraeus. This port, one of the biggest in Europe, was meant to be one of China's main gateways to the old continent. Even more significant is the Chinese presence in Belarus. Lukashenko's Belarus is a country close to the world, and its commodity exchange is directed almost exclusively to its closest eastern neighbor. Hence, the real breakthrough for Minsk was the visit of the Chinese leader Xi Jinping in 2015 and the signing of several dozen agreements for a total amount of almost $16 billion, which is an exorbitant amount for this poor country. This included infrastructure, industrial, communication and even cultural contracts. The flagship project is the recently opened Great Stone Technology Park worth half a billion dollars, in which 33 Chinese companies have already invested an additional $2 billion. According to the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, the cumulative amount of Chinese loans, subsidies and investments in Belarus are estimated at $20 billion. Flawed Perception Based on all these mega-projects, Wes Mitchell, a former US state assistant, even went so far as to say that the region was in bed with China. But is it really that Chinese influence is spreading over the region? There are many indications that the pompous declarations on close cooperation between China and Central Eastern European states are not supported in reality. Over the years 2000 and 2019, out of the $129 billion worth of Chinese investments in Europe, only $10 billion went to the countries of Central and Eastern Europe. In Germany alone, the Chinese invested two and a half times more capital. Moreover, the statistics are not improving at all. Most investments go to Western and Northern Europe. The share of Chinese foreign direct investment in eastern part of Europe compared to the rest of the continent in 2018 and 2019 was 2% and 3% respectively. On a macro scale, the Chinese inability to operate in the region is also visible. The aforementioned high-speed railway between Hungary and Serbia has not been completed after seven years. In Romania, after signing several agreements, finally none of the projects worth $10 billion left the ground. Montenegro, on the other hand, with its highway project, fell into the trap of Chinese debt diplomacy. 
Nevertheless, Beijing has managed to create a perception of presence in the region, as evidenced by the words of the American official quoted earlier. This was influenced, among others, by the pro-Chinese actions of some politicians who, by proclaiming slogans sympathetic to Beijing, tried to create geopolitical leverage in relation to other players in the region, mainly the EU and the US. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban warned in 2018 that if his government didn't receive more funds from the European Union, Hungary would turn to China. Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic accepting the recent Chinese medical aid for the coronavirus pandemic was even more expressive when he kissed the Chinese flag and stated that China is the only country that can help. He did so even though the European Union has allocated aid funds of much higher value in the Balkans than China. The Czech President Miloš Zeman was also helpful for the cause when he described his country as a Chinese insinkable aircraft carrier in Europe and participated in the military parade in Beijing in 2015 as the only EU head of state. However, the attitude of even the most sympathetic to Beijing begins to change in the face of constantly failing promises. Miloš Zeman, five years after the Beijing praise, threatened to boycott the 17 plus 1 summit in 2020 due to the lack of Chinese investment in his country. The largest economy of 17 plus 1, Poland, after the initial favorable attitude and interest in cooperation with China, which resulted in an agreement on strategic cooperation in 2016, is now also distrustful about relations with China. Warsaw, like Bucharest, treats its alliance with the USA as a priority, which casts a shadow over its relations with Beijing. Poland is against China's investments in strategic infrastructure, including ports and airports, which was communicated by the Polish president Andrzej Duda. The relationship did not improve when Polish counterintelligence detained the director of the Chinese telecommunications tycoon Huawei in 2019 on suspicion of espionage. The Leverage in fact, goals for both sides of the 17 plus 1 platform have little to do with strengthening relationships and infrastructure breakthroughs. Beijing is using the perception of its presence in the region to leverage the US and the European Union. That also applies to the selected countries in the region that use the Chinese card to strengthen their negotiating position in relation to Brussels or Washington. The clearest examples are Hungary and Serbia. The second group of countries are states that base their defense on Washington's guarantees and see Chinese influence more as a threat than an opportunity. The geographic proximity of Russia is a common factor here, as it is mainly Poland, Romania or the Baltic states. Finally, we have countries such as the Czech Republic and Slovakia, whose societies are clearly opposed to the values promoted by China, as evidenced by the Group for Tibet established by the Czech parliament. Lost Chance Beijing's influence on the region of Central and Eastern Europe is more a media topic than a real lever. If China didn't plan large investments from the very beginning and the entire 70 plus 1 project was to serve as propaganda platform from scratch, then the Middle Kingdom has succeeded in creating the perception. In any other scenario, however, China has failed. The single examples such as investments in Belarus, the takeover of the Greek port in Piraeus, or a soft power show during the pandemic fever are a drop in the pond. The countries of the region are disappointed with the failure to fulfill Beijing's promises and are reluctant to the Chinese civilization idea. This fact will be very difficult for China to change and gain a wider influence in this strategically important place in the world. It was Caspian Report. The video was prepared by me, Hubert, from Good Times, Bad Times channel. If you want to see more of my content, please check out my channel. The links will be provided below.